And so the reality is we have to be very careful in our worship services because if we bring the wrong things in, we could be manufacturing a feeling which could be mistaken for the presence of God or the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hello? Come on now, is it coming together for you now? You starting to see this? Okay, let's go a step further, friends. What if the musical devil, which indeed he is, happens to have your ear with his kind of music? And now you believe that's the call of the shepherd. And he's calling to you, you know, the sheep hear his voice, right? But here's the problem. What if we've been listening to the wrong shepherd because it makes us feel a certain way? I believe dev the devil is going to use... I believe he's going to use music at the end of time when he impersonates Christ. When he impersonates Christ. And all of a sudden we're going to go, oh, oh, this is my God who I've waited for. And the Bible says, whoa, 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 don't go. If he's in the desert, don't go. But wait a minute. I, I, I'm feeling the calling and I've, I've listened to this all my life. What if he happens to bring some of the greatest singers and groups around that play your favorite inappropriate music? Surely this must be God. Are you seeing the big picture here? I believe this has eternal consequences. What we listen to in our cars, what we listen to in our churches, what we allow our children to listen to can either help us toward the Lord or help us toward self and the devil. Period. So we hear songs like this, like this, that are meditative. They border on this whole idea with this contemplative prayer. By the way, all this stuff goes hand in hand. And we, we sing these songs like this. We'll sing this for 20 minutes. I feel God now. Oh. The trance, listen to what he says and how he says it. Sing that to him again. I, I, I bye bye, prefrontal cortex. And now I'm open to receive whatever is preached into my mind. And now I feel the presence of God. Friends, at the end of time, can we trust our feelings? We must live by faith, not by sight or our emotions. The human mind shuts down. We're almost done. The human mind shuts down after three or four repetitions of a rhythm for, or a melody or a harmonic progression. Furthermore, excessive repetition causes people to release control of their thoughts. Rhythmic repetition, listen, is used by people who are trying to push certain ethics in their music. And I've had people come up to me, well-meaning Christians, Christian uh, music ministries and say, what's wrong if we use this stuff, Christian? We're just going to give them the good message in our lyrics. What's wrong with this? Wait a second. Does God want to use trickery and short circuit and hypnotize you to put his truth in you? Absolutely not. We don't use the methods of the devil to, to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's a willing choice. We openly and, and with great intention and with great intelligence, we say, I am choosing to serve God. Not, why am I serving God? Because you were told to... Hello? So what we do now is we get these young people, thousands of young people, we bring them in and they're just having this, this feeling, this emotionalism happening and now they feel like they're feeling God. They sense that this is the presence of the Holy Spirit and we bring them in, we have these rock concerts and then we also take them on these things like where we have these, the song, have you ever heard the song, these are the days of Elijah? Are these the days of Elijah? Yes, they are. But friends, does that mean it's time for a big old fat party? No. It means it's to, to repent of our sins, to be converted, and to serve God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and take it to other people. Amen? So, but yeah, oh yeah, here we go. This is a church service. Woo! Man, we're going to feel God now. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. This is a worship service. Okay, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. Here's the middle of the song. Paul the rhythmic Do you hear the polyrhythmic elements? 
that have to do with Jesus? Okay, let me ask you a question. What picture of God does that paint in the mind? A holy God? No. A party God. I don't serve a party God. I serve a holy God. Who I am not even worthy to approach, even backwards. Unloose your sandals. No, I'm not going to loose my sandals. I'm going to have a party in your house, God. And then, listen to this. Listen to the drums. All polyrhythmic, prefrontal cortex gone. Just in case there was any prefrontal cortex still there functioning properly. Let's go into a mantra now for three minutes. Watch. There is no God like Jehovah. 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 I sense you here. There's oh God like to. Oh, wasn't that an amazing worship service? I felt the presence of God. What a cheap imitation. Anybody ever heard of Rick Warren? Who wrote The Purpose Driven Church and Purpose Driven Life? Here's what he says The worship has nothing to do with the style or the volume or speed of a song. God loves all kinds of music because He invented it all. If I can lay on some hands, man. Okay, I'm sorry. But here's the thing. <laughs> okay, continue on. Fast and slow, loud and soft, old and new. You probably don't like it, but God does. Direct quote from that man. False prophet. False prophet. I used to say false prophet of God. No, no, no. Just false prophet. Child guidance, 540. There has been a great change, not for the better, but for the worse in the habits and customs of the people in reference to religious worship. Here's the content. Religious worship. The precious and sacred things which connect us with God are fast losing their hold upon our minds and hearts and are being brought down to the level of the common things. The reverence which the people had anciently before the sanctuary where they met with God in sacred service has largely passed away. Nevertheless, God himself gave the order of a service, exalting it high above everything of a temporal nature. Amen? We are not to be stimulating the flesh. Worship is not about us. Worship is about worshiping God. It's not egocentric. It shouldn't fill my ego or self. It should be theocentric. That means God-centered. And we get into this thing, what am I going to get out of worship now? What am I, how is it going to make me feel? What's it going to do for me? No, worship is about giving to God and worshiping Him and giving Him the honor and praise that He deserves. Amen. Praise God.